Hello, I'm Daniel Weiss, your host, and you are listening to my podcast. If you are new to this podcast, my aim is to give you the insight so you learn how to master your mind and optimize your health for the peak performance that is sustainable. Okay. So for everybody that is listening, welcome, welcome. And today's guest is Charlie. And how do you pronounce actually your surname? It's a good question, right? It's Rufio. Okay. And, <laughs> yes, you are a young YouTuber. Your passion is actually fitness and longevity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so can you introduce yourself to, to the people who don't know you? Yeah, so basically my biggest passion, so it's almost an obsession. It's like it's like on the on the edge of being an obsession. It's like nutrition exercise and health because when i was 16 i was a pretty like skinny dude then i started to work out i weighed around 100 pounds and then i always wanted to gain some muscle mass i wanted to look good and then i informed myself about like working out you know like protein and as a 16 year old dude like i was just like reading about bodybuilding and i was eating like this meat-based diet you know like even i ate around 200 at some point i ate around over 200 grams of protein at like 100 pounds you know crazy stuff and then um, I read a pretty cool, cool book called The Ultra Mind Solution by Dr. Mark Hyman. And he talks about nutrition from the paradigm of like being healthy, like optimizing your diet to become even healthier. And, I mean, I was uh, 19 back then, um, or even 20. And, you know, as a 20-year-old, you are always like feeling kind of good. You have so much energy. But then for the first time, I realized, hey, man, I could eat a little bit healthier and improve even my diet even more to optimize it for health. And then I started to, to do that, like besides also working out. And then last year I started, no, last year I, I turned 24. Even before when I turned 23, I realized, okay, I'm not getting younger and people were always making like fun of me because I looked so young and I still look young. And then I thought, hmm, what if I could still look young when I'm like 40? And uh, the first was just a joke, but then I was like, okay, man, let's like research it. I started to research it. I started to read about it. And now I'm here on YouTube uh, talking about also longevity and health because it's a big topic and most people are really not informed. Most people have still these myths about like nutrition, you know, like don't eat carbs after 6 p.m., which has some benefits here and there if you look at the research, but it's not so like big that it will like, do you harm and stuff like that and then he said okay i wanna you know because i already read a lot about nutrition on a daily basis so i have a lot of knowledge and not to share that knowledge for me would be like lost potential so i kind of want to show to share that stuff and combine it with like editing videos and make it a little bit bit artistic and also like entertain people and educate people yeah that's very important and thank you for the introduction and uh intermittent fasting is one of the topics that I would like to discuss with you today mm-hmm. something that is partly involved in longevity studies, right? And it's partly yes. also, I think you follow the IF or you, you have been following it for some time. Yeah. Do, do you still follow it or do, do you just use it like from time to time? Uh, that's a really good question because I was already talking about that stuff to yesterday with another YouTuber. Because an interesting thing is, in the beginning, people thought, yeah, like fasting is not really healthy. You need to eat like six, seven meals a day, you know, or you need to eat breakfast. And then the intermittent fasting people came out. And then the paradigm got like so far that people said, yeah, like 20 hours of fasting is good. But fasting more is good. Fasting more is good. Don't eat for 20, don't eat at all for 24 hours, which is also cool. It has its time at its place. And now the paradigm is kind of shifting more into the other direction again, and it's getting like balanced. Because if you follow Walter Longo, the author of the um, longevity diet, he talks about how to optimize your diet for longevity. And he actually says fasting is very good because of like autophagy that gets activated when you fast. Your body is like getting rid of the toxins and like rebuilding itself in a proper way. But if you fast too much, like what he says, is you increase your risk of getting heart disease or also gallstones. And he's the first guy that talks about it. And he said, he says like 12 to 13 hours is really optimal, but then more uh, is not always good and has his uh, downsides. 
So he hasn't really shown research so far, if I'm not wrong. I need to look into that. But it's just a little disclaimer for people listening. So intermittent fasting is good, but it's not the holy grail. And I guess the truth is somewhere in between. So yeah, I'm still following intermittent fasting. But the, the thing is, you know, back in the days, I was always really like rule-based. I was like, okay, I need to fast at least 16 hours. Otherwise, I was feeling bad, you know, like it was some weird stuff. Yeah. And then when I just fasted for 12 hours, I was feeling bad because I was like, no, it's not intermittent fasting. But now I've basically read every position I've read, like from Brad Pillen, uh, he talks about like uh, alternate day fasting, like eat, stop, eat, not to eat for one day and then eat the next day. I've also read Walter Longo who says fast for 12 hours. So I've basically read everything. And now I just eat by my own feelings, like what my body is telling me after like eight years of, of researching that stuff. And then what my body tells me most of the time is fasting to till like 13 to 15 hours for me works the best of like health and well-being. Of course, sometimes I fast for 18 hours on some days and I go out and then I, I wake up late and then I just want to eat one big meal. It's, I, mean, I mean, it's fun to do that. Sometimes I also do that. But now I have like some more balanced way to, to look at that. Yeah, that's very important what you said, like uh, how it shifted like from eating like six, seven, eight meals to boost your metabolism maybe even, you know. And <laughs> uh. now people are like, I, I still see it. Maybe it's balancing, but uh, some people are still in this dogma that you know, the longer I fast, the better. And they fast like three out of four days. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I think they just overdo it. And I understand it because people, some people, when you don't have this information like you have, for example, then you just follow something. And yes, that's because you miss the understanding of it. And that's why I want to also spread this message make it like clear with people or to show them maybe a better path that it's not like this extreme or this extreme but to explain it in some way the, the whole nutrition because I also had this I started with fasting that is um, how I got into nutrition and it was with Brett Pylon's book this well, what was it eat stop eat right yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the old version so yeah and, and I, I had it like a dogma like 16 8 and I couldn't break it you know and now I'm just recently I found all this also like a negative aspects of it or potentially negative aspects like um, some hormonal issues and especially when it comes to um, balancing the diet and like like we mentioned cortisol spikes associated with with this so for some person it might be okay for me for myself mm -hmm. no so mm -hmm. it all depends right and uh, my goal or my holy grail so to speak is to find the kind of eating that for myself would be uh, intuitive like you said uh, i don't feel like eating i don't if i feel like eating that in that case let's eat I mean. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's a pretty interesting topic because i mean if you tell people just eat like by intuition like for 99 percent of people or for a lot of people like they would just like i mean i if you would tell me that like have told me that like some some years before i would either be super skinny or would have like way more body fat because most people live in that kind of environment where they can eat like high calorie foods like really quickly i yeah, mean I now agree. Like think about like 10,000 years ago to eat 300 calories from nuts, you would have needed to perhaps walk 10 miles or something, you know. And now you can just go to the store and you can eat a chocolate bar that has like carbs, fats and salt, everything. And then your brain is getting addicted to that food and you just need to go to the fridge and eat that. And you can, eat, you can easily eat about like 1,000 calories in like 20 minutes without even like leaving your chair, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, exactly. Also, a good book is uh, it's called The Hungry Brain by Stefan Gune. Also, for people listening, they can also check that book, book out. It just talks about that, basically. Yeah, and th definitely, uh, like, based on what I found out so far, is like there are too many variables that can affect this. So, I, from my cur cur like, uh, current understanding, 
you cannot really eat intuitively like 100 percent so it's like you you need to also track or understand how much you eat and so on but yeah pretty much for, for a normal person they can stay i would say lean and considerably fit and everything and eating intuitively like 95 percent of the time i'm just throwing yeah. it out there but yeah yeah i mean sometimes to be honest man sometimes it's just fun to do like these huge cheat days like basically right now for example i have 995 youtube subscribers and two years ago when i started i always wanted to have a community of at least 1000 people so as soon as i reached that i will just do like a, a huge cheat day just for fun you know to eat like over my calories and like then calorie dense foods like not like bad food but you know i will eat more like dark chocolate that I would normally uh -huh. eat. I would eat more nut butters and just like indulge a little bit in food because I mean, especially if you're an athlete, times like that, they will even like do you good instead of harm you. So sometimes it's also fun to do that. So yeah, you don't need to eat like intuitively like all the time, you know, it's pretty difficult actually. Uh, when, when I heard longevity first time, the term longevity, what I imagined was only the lifespan. So how long I live right mm -hmm. but then as after our first conversation I started delving or getting more in touch with this and I also found out that longevity is not only about like the li lifespan or living longer but also living healthier let's say so yes it's more about I would say about vitality mm -hmm. and being able to do things and live healthily even when you are like 70 80 years old and actually uh, i was listening to this book the blue zones by dan bauer um, just recently and he was also uh, are you familiar with this book mm -hmm, yeah i've heard about it yeah. yeah yeah i definitely listened to it because i think in one of the, your videos you also mentioned okinawan diet right mm -hmm. and maybe we can also speak more about that uh, which is one of the blue zones and uh, the point is that many people who they study who are this um, living about 100 years or live up to 110 years and so on they seemed to be actually very vital and they looked like they were 60 years old Mm -hmm. They couldn't believe that they are like 100, 90 uh, years old and such. So, yeah, can, can you speak or introduce this term, mm -hmm. longevity, what mm -hmm. it really means? Uh, mm -hmm. Like, to be honest, I never really, fo I never really researched the uh, like, actual definition. But for me, the right. definition is the same. For me, it's not about like getting to 120. I mean, it would be cool. But what I want to have is I want to add some extra years to my lifespan and also add like quality years, as you said, you know, like having a vital life, being able to exercise for a longer time. Because if you have read, if you have read the longevity diet by Walter Longo, he talks about the study where they compared, um, I guess they were like 38 year old people. And they realized that some of the 30 year old people, 38, they were biologically like uh, 25 year olds and others were already like half wise, like 60 year olds. And they were all like 38, like but the biological year were like 38 years. So you can see like your biological year has really nothing to say about your actual age. And this is a super amazing thing to think about. So you can actually, I mean, you can say some, something is with the genes. But also, you can also change your lifestyle so you can be one of the people that has a, a or like, um, like is younger biologically than his like number that he has, you know, in the years. So this was a pretty interesting thing to think about. So you can do that by changing your lifestyle. I mean, there are things you can already do right now, you know, like stand more instead of sitting in front of your computer, um, walk more, um, do more exercises, one thing. But one specific thing is also optimize your macronutrients and your quality of the food you are eating. This is a big thing also about the longer talks about. And the interesting thing is um, a healthy diet, of course, is a nutrient-dense diet. I guess your listeners already know that. I'm also a big fan of the Nutrient Diet by Joel Fuhrman. He talks about like uh, the more nutrient-dense your diet is, the better. So, I mean, fruits and vegetables have the highest 
density of nutrients, especially cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables. Um, and this is a super cool thing to think about. I mean, just eat more vegetables and, and fruits. I mean, already our grandparents were talking about that. That's nothing new. But what is new is actually the, the research about protein because the more protein people were eating, the less long they lived, actually. I mean, it's a correla- uh-huh. correla- correlation studies, I and mean, the correlation studies are not really valid, but also um, other types of studies, like um, like just like um, they, they did like something like cr- clinical trials also where they like measured oxidative stress in terms of like protein, stuff like that. But what Walter Longo realized is um, if you eat a lot of protein, you will also get more of the amino acids, leucine, and by getting more leucine, you will activate growth pathways such as mTOR and the IGF-1. Right. And mTOR and IGF-1 is a good thing for muscle building, of course, but it's not the best thing for longevity because um, if you experience a lot of mTOR and IGF-1, your cells are proliferating at a faster pace, and it's all about balance. So if you experience too much of it, your uh, the DNA, DNA damage that you experience uh, can also like proliferate in your cells and then bad cells and bad things can grow in your body that you won't, don't want to have. So people that eat more protein, uh, as you have seen in the China study, also experience more cancer, unfortunately. And it's just like uh, not the best way of eating if you over-consume protein. There's a cool YouTuber called uh, Ivan Blaskes. He also talks about the Nutarian diet. He's the only Nutarian bodybuilder that I've seen so far on YouTube. And he talks about uh, a higher protein diet is still, is still bearable for your body. But your body adapts with uh, with higher uh, biomarkers such as creatine from like your your um, bladders. I guess no, not bladders. Or, what is it called? The organ in English, the um, the organ that is detoxifying your body. It's not the liver. It's the other two ones. Uh, <laughs> sorry for the for the vocabulary. And then um, it's it's an no adaptation. <laughs> it's an adaptation for your body from your body, but it's not a favorable adaptation if you eat more protein. So this is just. A thing I got from Walt Longo, it also changed my paradigm of a healthy diet. So instead of just eating a plant-based diet, I also try to eat the least amount of protein possible to get the best results in the gym. So basically, it's uh, not about the protein, but it's more about the leucine itself, right? Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, 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 more or less. So if you have like 100 grams for like plant, 100 grams of protein from plants. Uh, you're still better off than 100 grams of protein that you like from a whey protein or something. Yeah, and from plant protein, I think the soy has a lot of leucine content, right? Yeah. Because it's yeah. pretty much the complete protein. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, right? The completer protein is, the more it will spike IGF-1 and mTOR. So it's a two-sided so- sword, you know? If you say, yeah, I just want to maximize my gains and my muscle mass, then go for soy protein, go for whey, go for like 200 grams of protein a day. But if you want to also optimize your longevity, probably less will be better and also like less complete protein. I mean, you know, if you combine proteins here and there, you will get a complete protein anyway. And the advantage of a vegan diet, if you combine uh, specific protein sources such as lentils and quinoa or lentils and rice, for example, you will also get micronutrients with it. And you will, you will not get a lot of micronutrients from like a steak or like from che- chicken breast, you know? Yeah, right, definitely. And so uh, there are other things that you are also getting from from the complete meal, complete food, right? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, like iron, fiber and such. And yeah, antioxidants. From that perspective, mm. it's always better or seems to be always better yes. nutrition per calorie from the plant sources. Yes, yes. That's also a big thing I would think about or nutrition per calorie so if you eat like cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli brussels sprouts or like cauliflower uh, if you base your kale. With that kale yeah sorry for like uh, for forgetting <laughs> kale, like the, the master of the cruciferous vegetables at least like in the u.s uh, here it's not that common a lot like in right now but uh, yeah then um, really? yeah i mean i don't see it that 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 often here like when i was eating at whole foods i was always i always did the same i took a big plate and then I was the the bottom of the plate was just like raw kale always raw kale was the bottom, and then I was like putting in some beans, some quinoa, some other vegetables, a little bit of healthy sauce, and then the top was always raw broccoli. <laughs> I was making sure to get the raw nutrients like in the bottom of my plate and at the top. <laughs> uh huh. It's just a funny way yeah. to like to like uh, to like design your plate. <laughs> 
was more of a bag than a plate. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I can imagine. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically the what I would say about longevity. It's um, be, eat less protein, and if you work, if you work out, for example, because I know one of your friends right was asking about leucine. Um, if you also want yes, to, exactly. you know, because you know, at the end of the day, man, I had this time in my life where after reading that research, I was like, oh no, I need to eat low protein. Then I had the time when I was eating just like 60 to 70 grams of protein every day. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to work out too much. Like having too much muscle mass is not healthy. But then I was getting unhappier, man, because like working out and gaining muscle mass for me is so much fun. And I was like, come on, man, I... I optimize my life less around longevity, but I still want to have gains. I still want to have a photo shoot in a couple of years or some photo shoots. I still want to look amazing. So I was like, come on, man, I amp up my protein a little bit for peace of mind. and uh, But yeah. still, like, keep it low. So back in the day when I was 150 pounds, I ate around 150 grams of protein. And right now I'm 140 pounds and I eat around 100 grams to 110 uh, grams. Because I, I, I didn't hear the part that uh, when you were 150 pounds, uh, you ate how much? 150 grams of protein approximately. Yeah, so basically like one gram per pound. Yeah, and now I eat like so around that is about like one nine per kilo. Yeah. And right now I eat 100 grams of protein and I still have the benefits. I mean, when I will cut down again, perhaps I amp it up a little bit, but still I, 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 I eat less protein because I've read this longevity research and it's really a big part of my yeah. life right now. But this is like a longevity from the, let's say, perspective of nutrition itself. And mm -hmm. yeah, we could also speak maybe about antioxidants and other parts that... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. make the complete picture but mm -hmm. also i think uh, what you mentioned several times was like you ate for example more protein because you wanted to build muscle and for the peace of your mind mm -hmm. and uh, i as i understand for example longevity i, I want to look at it as at anything uh, from different aspects and when we speak about longevity specifically it's like you know, one part is nutrition, one part is uh, the lifestyle, like movement that you mentioned, going for a walk, staying active, and other part is like social situations, being social, you know, like serotonin induced by you know, speaking with friends, and, you know, also things like emotional stuff, like feeling, be, uh, feeling that you are needed, and, you know, all the other parts mm -hmm. that affect your mind, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, I haven't really researched like all the parts because I'm a nutrition nerd, but I totally agree with your point. I mean, what's the point in like having the best uh, longevity diet, quote unquote, if you don't go out anymore and eat with your friends? Because uh, I guess also like, Walter Longo actually says that the longevity of your longevity diet is also important. I mean, the diet I have right now is a diet I can keep for the rest of my life, I, I mostly guess. And this is a good thing for me. But if I would optimize my diet even more, eat less protein and worry too much about other stuff, then this would not have a lot of like longevity, you know. So everybody, I mean, my, my opinion is everybody should, should read the research or should at least subscribe to people on YouTube <clears throat> that talk about that. But and then get and then like listen to the research or listen to podcasts like here. They should know about it. But then how they how they implement it should everyone that should be everyone's decision. But like really get get it, you know, read it and listen to it. But then how you do it, it's like it's your thing, you know. That's my opinion. Yeah. I, I love that because it needs to be personalized and this I would get back to the amount of stress that we experience, right? Oh we don't so, hear you anymore. Uh, Hello, that's good, okay. Okay, yeah. so uh, I think that it needs to be personalized and that it also affects, you know, like um, how much stress do you experience throughout the day, throughout your life. Mm -hmm. um, this, I think, is the biggest factor that contributes to, let's say, to longevity as a whole picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. totally. And when, when you mentioned that these people like uh, listen to podcasts, listen to people, who are into the longevity and uh, so people can actually understand it better and personalize it for themselves like uh, could you give us some tips or for the people listening mm. that like who are your favorite or what what are your favorite sources 
Oh, I do you mean like books and stuff? Oh, that's a good question, man. I love it. So, I mean, if it comes to books, um, I've really enjoyed the... So far, I've read a lot of books you know, about nutrition. I've read uh, How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger. I've read uh, The Ultramind Solution by Dr. Mark Hyman. I've read uh, even about paleo. I, I like to read about the paleo diet because I want to mm-hmm. listen to where they, these people come from and I don't want to fall into the trap of my confirmation bias. Um, right. So I read a lot, but so far the guy that really like I like the most or the guys are like a Vulture Longo, The Longevity Diet, a really, really cool book. And also Joel Fuhrman. Uh, he wrote the book Eat to Live mm-hmm. and also Super Immunity because these two, the, these two authors are not um, just like people that are following a specific diet. Like, for example, they're not like the paleo doctors or they eat, don't even vegan doctors, even though I like like the vegan community and I'm also like part of it because I, I'm on a vegan diet right now. I mean, most of the time. But I really enjoy these two the most because they're not falling into a specific dogma. And they talk a lot about like research and they talk about the same stuff basically in like 90 to 95 or even 100% of your calories coming from plants and then the rest of like animal-based products. And the only reason why both talk about animal-based products is because they like fish from the perspective of getting your omega-3 fatty acids because most people don't want to supplement with omega-3 fatty acids like health nuts like us. They just want to eat food and like don't think about it. So then they should also eat some fish because of the omega-3 fatty acids. But also realize, mm-hmm. okay, the, the higher the fish was in the food chain, the more mercury contained. So I would not eat too much like tuna, for example, like big fishes. So I'd eat like uh, small fishes, like fish like sardel, stuff like that. Also right now, I don't have my algae omega-3 supplement anymore. Like I, I don't have it. So my my store also doesn't have it. So I had to buy like krill oil, for example. So I'm basically, basically not vegan anymore right now. But I decided to buy krill oil because it's not as high in the food chain and it contains less mercury, you know. So I love these two authors, like Joel, Joel Fuhrman, Walter Longo. Uh, also authors I enjoy, like uh, Dr. Michael Greger, even though sometimes he's perhaps he is perhaps not the most scientific, you know, sometimes. Um, I also started to following Dr. Mercola, how is it, how he's called. He's like mm-hmm. uh, also interesting guy. I haven't really uh, followed a lot, but I also liked him. Uh, Mike Mark Hyman also uh, the guy I've mentioned in the beginning has read the, uh, written a cool book like the Ultramind Solution. I don't like the stuff he is doing right now like that much because he talks a lot about high fat and low carb diets, and then most people okay. will think like yeah like all carbs are, are bad, but no it's not like that. I mean fruits and vegetables and legumes are still like good carbs, but you need to like you know like nutrition is really nuanced. But I would say, long story short, like Joel Fuhrman is the is the way to is the the guy to go and Walter Longo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect. I and mean, you mentioned a lot of important things, I think. So <laughs> I don't even know where to start or what. Yeah, what I'm ranting again. <laughs> yeah, it's like also going back to what you mentioned before. Like you mentioned my friend who was asking about the losing content, right? About of mm-hmm. the food and uh, to speak about how it affects the longevity so basically I would get back to that and um, you also mentioned it like having the protein to build muscle uh, you might prioritize that over longevity at some time and so I would like to speak maybe or have your point perspective on that from the mm-hmm. health versus performance because when you want to perform when you want to build muscle you you might need to do sacrifices on the other side. Yes, yes. And yes, so mm-hmm. it's all about priorities, I mm-hmm. would say. Yeah. Yeah, I can elaborate a little bit because I believe that building muscle is not the black and white thing. You're not building mm-hmm. muscle yeah. or building no muscle at all. So if you really like, my, it's my opinion, man, if you really want to prioritize in building muscle mass, like you would take like steroids and just eat like a lot of whey protein, animal protein and stuff like that. And you would optimize it pretty good. I mean, you would gain so much mass and stuff. But then the risk of like getting a serious uh, disease or something like that is like way increased. So then if you want to take it like less far, far you can you can eat like a normal diet, quote unquote, most people eat and just amp up your protein with animal-based protein sources and you will be pretty well off in terms of muscle building. But then again, I believe you would feel not that good. You will also be, get more sick. You know, I see so many people around me, they're getting sick and stuff because they don't have high anti- antioxidants levels in their bodies, in their nutrition. 
So my take on it is um, I look at the research of like muscle building on a plant-based diet because I still want to be on a plant-based diet because I believe it's a really, really good diet for optimizing also um, like uh, performance because you're just getting less sick. You're having so much, so many antioxidants. Uh, like your recovery is also increased most of the time. And uh, then I researched that and I came to the conclusion, okay, if you really want to optimize it on a plant-based vegan diet, you should probably amp up your protein you should probably uh, supplement with, I guess, protein powder if you want to, if you if you really like, want to end up with protein like that. And then also I would really think about like the leucine threshold and, uh, and, uh, and your meal frequency because now we went so far that some people say, yeah, you don't, you, don't, you don't care about meal frequency, you just need like one meal, or you just need all your calories and then you're good, which you can still build muscle with, but it's not actually true. So also studies that talk about meal frequency came to the conclusion that eating three to six meals a day is still the best for like muscle building and reaching yeah, uh, yeah and reaching this leucine threshold in these three to six meals uh, is the best way to amp up your protein synthesis so what i mean by leucine threshold is eat enough protein in a given meal to uh, eat enough uh, leucine to to activate your mus- muscle protein synthesis to the max and on a plant-based vegan diet you need a little bit more protein per meal than on a meat-based diet or animal protein based diet. So what I think it would be good is to have like uh, three meals a day with 40 grams of protein in each meal. Uh, if you if you weigh more as an athlete, you can eat more protein per meal. If you eat, weigh less, you can eat less. But to eat like 35 to 50 grams of protein in a meal and to eat three meals uh, on a plant based diet, you can also combine it with intermittent fasting. Even on a, in a, with fasting, would be a perfect way or a good way to kind of find a sweet spot between between both worlds, you know. So I would say fast for 12 to 16 hours a day, eat three mm-hmm. meals in that eating window and try to, um, in every meal, eat the same amount of protein if you want to optimize uh, longevity, but perhaps even more your muscle building properties. What I'm doing right now is I care a little bit more about longevity. So I basically um, fast for approximately 14 to 16 hours a day, I eat a little small meal, small meal in the beginning of the day, like right now, with still 30 grams of protein. And then at the end of the day, I eat a bigger meal with more protein, but still enough to spike, to reach this leucine threshold. And then like in between, I eat like nuts and fruits and really healthy stuff. And still my big meals are still healthy, you know. But I also eat stuff like uh, nut butters, for example, which is a little bit processed. To also amp up my calories to gain a little bit more weight to also optimize for gain so everybody needs to like find his own sweet spot but for me it's something that works pretty well and i also supplement with uh, with um, a pea protein right now because it's a mm-hmm. easier way for me to like think about my protein i don't want to like be in the train and eat my uh, pounds of like uh, chickpeas like every day you know what i mean so uh, yeah, yeah, that's how I think about it. But then again, on the same, on the, in, in the, at the same time, I supplement with uh, turmeric ca- caps, with ashwagandha, with omega three. You know, I take it very seriously, and I found a way for me that that works. Yeah, and actually, you mentioned one thing that would really be now came to my mind, like interesting to find the research on that. And probably there is none yet. When we speak about like plant-based diet and versus optimizing, you know, muscle performance. On one mm-hmm. side, the, we can say that plant-based diet might be lacking on certain amino acids, in mm-hmm. the, like leucine, in the high enough amount. Mm-hmm. And if you want to optimize muscle building, you you would better do it like whey shakes or whey protein, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which seems to be like the king. Mm-hmm. And and now, on the other side, plant-based diet provides you with better recovery, mm-hmm. which means over the long term, it would allow you to train more. Yes. And training stimulus is probably more important than, I would say, uh, that it's more important than having, you know, like supplementing with protein or hitting your protein numbers. Yes. yes. Of course, it doesn't mean, I'm, I'm not speaking about overtraining, mm-hmm. but having the good enough stimulus. So, 
having this kind of study like that would compare recovery uh, provided or as a benefit of plant-based eating versus optimized protein intake from the let's say whey shakes or the correct protein or whatever that would be kind of interesting to see mm-hmm. like you mean yeah the sweet spot and everything right yeah I mean it's always yeah. difficult to study that stuff because then people would like need to like uh, like uh, optimize their diets for the studies and then some studies are like self-reported studies which you can basically put in the garbage if it comes like nutrition yeah. research so yeah it's so it's such an interesting topic and that's the reason why we need people like us you know that are really like nerds and love to read about that stuff because to be honest like the whole knowledge i gathered from my nutrition uh, research i had to research it as hard as back in the day when i was like studying psychology at university you know like i got a degree in like nutrition like it's so crazy and so people like just misguided and not to say that that, that i know it all but we are on the good side, you know, to the to the optimal, like, quote-unquote, optimal nutrition uh, paradigm, let's say. Yeah, definitely. So, um, as I got it, basically, you are still following the vegan diet or, mm-hmm. let's say, nutrition, nutritarian mm-hmm. diet. And, yeah. Well, let, let's say, besides the oil, you are pretty much vegan, right? Yeah, I'm pretty much vegan um, just because I consume krill oil right now. And, you know, sometimes when, like, people give me smoothies or stuff like that, and then if there is honey in it, which is not vegan, like, you know, from definition yeah, yeah. standpoint. Or, you know, when, like, my, some friends of mine give me, like, some food, and I don't want to ask them, like, oh, is there, like, some milk in it? Because I'm, I'm not lactose intolerant or something, you know. So I, I keep yeah, it, like, yeah. socially acceptable in some kind of way, you know what I mean? So, but I'm, yeah, I am, I am, I guess I would say officially I am, I am on a vegan diet, but... Um, I prefer the term. Well, 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 just, just for the term, just for the label, let's put it that you are vegan. Yes, and, I am. I am. <laughs> and yeah, so my question was more towards like, what are the personal benefits that you have seen, if there are any, from from uh, my since vegan, you yeah. vegan? Uh To be honest, back in the day, I had a really strong immune system. I rarely got sick, but now. I, I feel like my immune system is even stronger. Like when people are getting sick around me, I'm not getting sick, man. Like it's it's crazy. And then also when I don't sleep enough and I realize I am on the edge of getting sick, I just um, I just like chill a little bit, you know, help my body to detoxify. I sleep for one night, uh, like I sleep like eight hours. Then I'm good, man. You know, like it's crazy. Like I feel like. My body is just like way more balanced and way, I don't know, like I just feel, you know, it's difficult to say because I, oh, I'm, a, I'm a that type of guy, I always optimize my diet, like we, we did this podcast already mm-hmm. two months ago and like I have so much more stuff to talk about, so I'm always like optimizing my diet, so there was not a point of like now I'm vegan and now my life changed, but I can gradually see how my life was changing and now also when I eat like sometimes I eat animal products again like last time in July I ate some fish or also like some yeah. meat in May 2017 and I was not feeling good man you know like sometimes I just try it out to see how I feel but now I don't eat animal products at all I'm like at the point where I'll be like realized so I would say my immune system is stronger than ever um, which is a good thing and mm-hmm. my recovery, I would say, is also better. Like, I have, like, less... I guess it's also because of the minerals, but my recovery, I would say, is also better. Especially if I don't have a lot of stress in my life, I really feel so good. Like, it's crazy. I also feel like um, Mark Hyman talks about that in his book, The Ultramind Solution. He talks about the four main neurotransmitters we have, like acetylcholine, um, dopamine, serotonin, and GABA. And since I'm eating healthier also, like, on a vegan diet, I feel like these... Um, these neurotransmitters are in a way more balanced way. I was also able to like quit coffee, with, which I was not able to during the last years. And I also think it's between uh-huh. I have a more balanced way of eating and living. This could be a, good, a big thing. Yeah, I, I really love what you're saying. And I, I think many people actually mentioned this and this, um, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People around you are getting sick. And we are not. I mean, mm. I don't remember the last time I, I was really sick. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, but I would like and to also talk about... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go on. 
Yeah, go on. Yeah, what I would like perhaps to talk about uh, in this podcast is also like some example days of both of us. Because when people hear about uh, nutrition, they're like, okay, like friends of mine are like, okay, that's interesting what you said, but what should I eat now? You know, like, you know, yeah, what I mean? definitely. Um, so we could perhaps also like today, for example, for me is a pretty good example day. I have a rest day. So um, I woke up and I was fasting for like 15 hours. So what I did basically is um, I woke up um, and I. I ate just a little small meal because I don't want to stress my, I don't want to eat too much in the morning. So when I wake up, so what I did basically is I ate some vegetables, like some cherry tomatoes today. I ate some uh, alb- oh. almonds. Yeah, I love them. I ate some almonds with that, like raw almonds just for the fats, but also to absorb all the, the fat, soluble um, the nutrients and vitamins from the vegetables. I also ate uh, two kiwis with that. It's a habit I implemented. I almost every day I eat two kiwis because they are the most nutrient dense fruits of all, or I guess almost of all of them. And also uh, help to prevent and to reverse DNA damage. So I always eat two kiwis and I drank a a pea protein shake with that with uh, like 30 grams of of protein powder just to get some leucine in. And right now I also want to make some gains in the gym and everything. That this was my first meal. Uh, the second meal, right before the podcast. So was that after the workout? No, I didn't. I didn't work out today. Ah, yeah, yeah okay. I didn't work out. But most of the time, I eat. I drink my protein shake before the workout because I've read studies that um, the protein before the workout is as important as after the workout. And if you if you get protein yeah. before the workout, um, you don't need to care a lot about the meal after the workout. You can eat a meal after like two or three hours after the workout if you if you get protein before the workout, basically. So that's just my just, take. On- uh, yeah, ju- just recently I saw a study that was comparing actually pre-workout and post-workout protein mm-hmm. intake for the muscle building. And actually the post-workout seems to be marginally better mm-hmm. than the pre-workout. But yes, if you really want to optimize then pre-workout plus post-workout yeah. is the best, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But really, this, this we are speaking about like one two percent difference. So oh yeah, yeah, gotcha. I mean, unless unless you are like really want to totally optimize it, and you are a professional bodybuilder or something like that. Then yeah, yeah, then okay, yeah, totally, man, totally. Also, like getting back to the example day. Also, before the podcast, I also ate some raw, ca- raw carrots because I was like craving some some nutrients. And also some mm-hmm. some walnuts, also some raw walnuts. And this is a cl- kind of a snack I like to eat. And after that podcast, man, like around 7 or 8 p.m., I guess I will eat the biggest meal of the day. I will get some uh, raw broccoli. I will perhaps make a salad, something like that, with raw broccoli, which I really like. Um, I will also eat some, um, you know, pumpernickel bread, the whole grain bread. Yeah. It's, like, it's like a really, really dark bread. It has a shitload of like fiber. Yeah. I will eat like a package of that, I guess, with some um, um, cashew butter or some other good stuff and also some like chickpeas, you know, like just a big, big nutrient-dense meal. And if you struggle with fiber, I would just say, okay, eat like food that has a little bit less fiber if you struggle with that in the beginning or uh, eat more meals than what I would say. But it's just like how I like to structure my day. At the end of the day, I like to eat the mm-hmm. biggest amount of food because for me, I'm a little bit of a foodie. So while I also like, it's probably not the healthiest mm-hmm. thing, but I regulate some of my emotions through like eating and it's helped me to just chill, you know? So I like to eat yeah. like, big meals like at the end of the day to reflect on my day, to enjoy myself a little bit. Well, I definitely know that you also bring that mental aspect into the conversation. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so do you also have a set kind of macros or? Yeah, I mean. Because based on what you are saying, it's like there is certain am- amount of fat that you like to snack on walnuts and mm-hmm. such. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what fa- phase I am in. So uh, I have a range for protein. Uh, so protein right now I eat between like, I would say 90 grams of on some days it's, it's 80 grams some days but right now because i'm optimizing like my gym and everything i eat at least 90 grams of protein a day and they go as high as like 110 grams 115 120 grams so i would say on average like 100 grams of protein 
And then in, uh, for the fats, it's like it changes from day to day. Sometimes I, I, I like to eat more like cashew, uh, but I love cashew butter. That's a big thing, or almond butter on some days less. But I'm, on an average, perhaps 60 grams of fat, and I weigh around 65 kilograms. And then the uh-huh. rest is carbs. But when I'm cutting down, I, I focus on a lower fat diet because I realize when I cut down, when I cut body fat, I thrive more on high carb foods. And I amp up my protein a little bit to like 120, perhaps 130 grams, more or less. And then I eat a little bit less fat because I want to save up the calories. But I would say if you're listening to listening the podcast and you just want a healthy overall diet, like for the fat, I would say from like, I don't like the 80-10-10 diet, but I would say from 15% to even up to 40% if it's like a healthy, healthy, heavy fats, healthy plant fats. If you're not over-consuming omega-6 fatty acids, it's, it's a good range. And then for the protein, I would say, yeah, as I said before, like 0.8 grams of protein per lean body mass in pounds is a good range if you want to like uh, go to the gym and then the rest of like carbs. What was that, 0.8? I would say 0.8 grams per lean body mass in pounds works for yeah. most people on a calorie, on a maintenance diet with maintenance calories or calorie surplus. Uh-huh. I would say yeah, that sounds good. more will probably yes. be better for gains, you know, because it's, we talked about the, the percentages, perhaps you would make 10% or 5% more gain, more gains with 40 grams more protein or 20 grams more protein. <laughs> but for me, it's not, it's not, the, it's not the worth to worry you know, because then I would need to worry. Yeah, I need a second protein shake. I need more chickpeas. I would not like to worry too much about that. Yeah, definitely. It's not worth the trade-off. Yeah. And yeah, so that is for yourself. I would say like the zone diet which is like 50% carbs, 30% protein, 30 per, uh, sorry, how is it? 30% uh, fat and 20% protein seems to be also a good starting point for most people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with my own experience, also from feeling perspective, uh, what I realized for myself is 30% fat, 55% carbs, and 15% protein. For me, like in this range of like 15% protein, for me, I really felt the uh-huh. best. I mean, I still feel good right now, but I felt like less filled up with food, you know, because of less chickpeas and yeah. beans. And beans. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I mean, from my perspective or how my day works, it's like very simple and it is like I've been following or my breakfast, which is I actually have it at about now, it's like at about 9 to 10 a.m., somewhere in between, which is like oatmeal with fruits mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, a, and a little bit of fats in form of nuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So basically, this pretty high carb meal, I would say, and usually that lasts me till like 1 p.m. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And th- th- that's when I have my lunch, and it is usually like beans with grains mixed and a salad. Nice. And in th- yeah, and then it depends like when I work out. If I work out, um, I mean run or whatever throughout the day then I will maybe push it more back or eat it before or something like that and in the evening sooner or later also based on the workout I would have second well second meal that would be the third meal and that is the basically the same as I have for lunch I mean it's, mm-hmm. it's that simple yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. If if I'm still like not really hungry but want something more, then I for the dinner like the real last meal, I have something like like a big salad, so nutrient dense with fats. Nice. As you mentioned to help not be absorbed, so nuts, seeds, and salad. Yeah. And yeah. it's very very satisfying meal for me. Yeah, man. It's so crazy, right? You can eat so much food. It's so satisfying. And you can eat like a meal of 1,000 calories, like with nutrient-dense food. You can eat so much, man. And you know, it's really difficult to become fat, you know, if you eat like that. 
Yeah, definitely. It's really, really. By the so, way, how much? Sorry, how much protein do you get on a daily basis? Do you know it? Protein. Yeah. Uh, one hundred ten to one hundred twenty. Also right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, approximately nineteen to twenty percent, mm -hmm. approximately of my calories. And what's your workout like? You also run a lot and all that. You also go to the gym or what do you do like for like in your muscles? Yes, it's like uh, na now it's like um, I run or do the endurance training and that is five to six times a week. Mm -hmm. And besides that, I have a strength routine and that is like consisting of bodyweight exercises. And this is in the days between the hard running workout okay. so for example on, on monday i would have a recovery run and a strength routine on tuesday mm -hmm. i will have a interval training so gotcha. running gotcha. and yes on wednesday again like very easy run and with the focus on the strength training mm -hmm. and th thursday for example running heels is again hard for legs or for the running so Basically, you can say that upper part or upper body workouts and lower body workouts. Mm, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pretty, you have a pretty balanced way of working out. I like it. I like yeah, it. But for example, now oh, this week I have had like a recovery week when I will be um, not running at all. Actually, I didn't run, I ran only on Monday and I switched running for cycling, mm -hmm. which as far as I know, for, from the bodybuilding perspective, when it comes to cardio, it seems to be um, more beneficial as a cardio routine. Like to, bicycle. To have bike instead of running. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Gotcha. So, I also noticed that my recovery got better and my strength went up. And that is just because I cut down on running on this. On this week, oh, so I, okay. I definitely need to experiment with this. I, I'm far from finding my ideal spot, but yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's personal journey, man. I mean what I like to do with my workouts is uh, my body is for me is like building my body up is like art. And back in the day, I was not a really um a a athletic guy, so right now I just want to create this amazing athletic body and have this uh, awesome diet so I can see what my potential is. So what things I also have on my list is uh, learning calisthenics, you know, handstand, push-ups, uh -huh. stuff like that. So I'm on a journey to like basically try to achieve it. I also want to get better endurance. Um, but I realize for myself in my life right now, I always need to have an immersion period in one of these areas and then I can focus on the next one. So basically right now I'm following a, following a powerlifting type of um, routine because I want to amp up my bench press and my military press because it was always really weak in these, uh, in these exercises. So as soon as I do that, I will focus more on like sheer bodybuilding type of work, upper lower workout uh, four times a week uh, for, for uh, workouts and then like focus on like the aesthetics. And then when I do that, I also want to start running or cardio and then later mm -hmm. on, I also want to do more cardio and then also like do more calisthenics type of work. So I want to really see what my potential is. And for me, that's the reason why I'm so passionate about that stuff. You know, I don't care too much about like being the biggest dude or being the best guy in a specific area, even though being the best guy is, 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 a, is a good thing. I mean, every guy wants to be the best in some area, I guess. <laughs> but I really care about what my potential is and how far I can push it in a healthy way. And to kind of document that also for like my YouTube channel. And perhaps I guess I'll also make series on my YouTube channel. How am I like progressing in my powerlifting uh, journey? How am I progressing with the handstand push-ups and stuff like that? Yeah, and definitely people will be able to uh, follow you and to find the link to your YouTube channel below. But just for the reference, if, uh, can you name your channel? Yeah, so man, it's like... It's a pretty difficult name, like it's like Charles, like Charles, C-H-A-R-L-E-S, Rufio, which is R-U-F-F-I-E-U-X, it's a French name, but you can still find my channel if you type in my old channel name, which was called Charlie Himself, 
So just like Charlie himself, and then you will still get to my channel, uh, which okay. is, um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy about it. And I always, I mean, my, my mission is also like to improve my editing skills so I can like work on everything and just create this, <laughs> this little community because I always wanted a community of like, like-minded people, you know, that like my stuff. And it's basically a community of like friends and, you know, we have awesome discussions and I just want, I mean, it's also like kind of how we stayed in touch because I was doing videos, you were doing your thing and social media is just a, is a great tool, man. I love it. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, besides of that, uh, when you were speaking about that, you want to start also running and so on, like mm -hmm. build a little bit of endurance. Do you also do like maybe after your strength routine, um, kind of cool down or whatever because you know I, I don't go to gym mm -hmm. in general but I noticed when I was there or from just from the people speaking about it they do like maybe 20 minutes on the mm -hmm. bike mm -hmm. or on a treadmill before the workout or maybe 10 or 15 minutes after the workout you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. this kind of warm-up cool down mm -hmm. I don't know, do you do also yeah. anything like that or do you <laughs> see that's a redundant? To be honest, right now I'm following this powerlifting uh, schedule and the first uh, three weeks of my first powerlifting cycle were pretty hardcore. I had to go to the gym five days a week and bench five days a week. So five days a week I had to bench press, you know. So it was a Whoa. pretty taxing, yeah, it's a pretty taxing routine for the first three weeks. So then I was like, I mean, I could have, I could have like run for 10 minutes after every workout, you know. I don't want to bullshit you. But I was like, come on, man, I don't want to worry about that stuff. I will like start to run in week four. And week four will be uh, next week. And then in week four, I just need to do bench press for two days a week. And on the other two days, I'm doing doing a back day and the leg day. So I can still train my backs and my legs. And then I will like start to like run like for 10 to 15 minutes after my workouts just to get my endurance up. And yeah, it's a healthy way to like train my body. Also for the heart, I guess long term it's also good for the heart and everything. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay, so I mean, for the people, the best advice I could give regarding the endurance training and that is actually just going for a walk. Mm. And you can always, you know, just walk faster or yeah. uh, walk uphill or anything like that. And this is like really endurance training in disguise. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i totally agree man like just like start small and then you can always amp it up well but definitely i i also noticed like uh, how i can keep my endurance or fitness without running and that is really just going for a walk in the morning and when you go for a walk for like one two hours and you are walking in a brisk pace it's like well it's not as good as running if you are specializing in running mm -hmm. but uh, it's a good way to keep your fitness at some or s pretty good level yeah 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 i mean if you don't uh, use it you'll lose it basically that's like a big principle yeah definitely so that's it and i don't know is there anything else you would like to mention not really, man. I had a lot of fun. I mean, I need to get the second time on this podcast. Otherwise, uh, I mean, I will have some other stuff to talk about for, in a couple of months from now, for sure. Yeah, for sure. We will have any sort of new things to do. And also, do, do you also help people through coaching or how do you... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I also coach people in the area of like muscle building, fitness, and I, mm -hmm. I coach people especially that also want to get the knowledge themselves because what I'm doing is with my clients is I'm not just coaching them barely. I'm also uh, telling them why am I doing stuff, uh, how, why you need that. I, I show them everything they want to, to see. I give them, like I show them the books, I show them the studies. So after like people work with me, they could also like basically start coaching other people, which is pretty funny because, you know, I also want to have the biggest impact in my life. Like I want to create a legacy and to teach people the stuff like one-on-one -on -one while helping them to achieve their right. goals is a good way to build that. Mm -hmm. So how can people actually contact you so if they want some personal coaching, I guess, mm -hmm. if they do you build them also some uh, like workout routine or yeah, yeah. Yeah, how sure. do you work with them? 
Yeah, sure. It's always oh, in, okay. individualized, also like from the pricing standpoint. With everybody, it's not the same. And I, I, I price by the time I need to invest and the effort I need to invest in. But basically, how you can reach me is basically you can write in the comments of my video, hey, I, I'm interested about the coaching. Or you can also contact me on my uh, email, like it's uh, contact at uh, charlesrefue.com, like charles, uh, R-U-F-F-I-E-U-X.com. But I mean, if you write me on Facebook, on Instagram, or on YouTube, I just need to see it, and then I will get in touch with you. Yeah, that's perfect. So yeah, if anybody who is listening who is interested to work with you, they have an easy way how to reach you. Nice. Okay, Charlie. Thank you very much for your time. Nice. No and worries. Yes, for all the information that you shared with us today. And I really enjoyed speaking with you. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode and see you next time. If you liked it, please share, subscribe and you will find all the important links in the show notes or below video, however you got to this. So there will be also a page to subscribe, my Facebook page, my website. And if you are looking for a coach or coaching experience, you are looking to boost your performance, whether it's mental or physical to the next level, then go to my website that is linked down below and contact me through there.